beyond detecting sound, how is it that we can detect different types of sound? How are we able to distinguish between the vast collection of sound waves we encounter throughout our lives? What allows us to distinguish between a pop song on the radio and say our smoke detector alarm? At least in part, the answer lies in the cochlea. But before getting into how the cochlea achieves the discrimination of different sounds, let's briefly review the properties of sound waves. For now, we'll focus on two of the major properties of sound, frequency and amplitude. Frequency, measured in hertz, refers to the number of wave cycles per second. For example, here we can see a low frequency wave and a high frequency wave. The frequency of the sound wave determines its pitch or tone. So a low frequency sound wave would be a low pitch. Think about the beating of a large drum. In contrast, this high frequency wave would be a high pitch. Think about a referee blowing a whistle. The second property we'll look at is amplitude which is a measurement of the intensity or the volume of a sound wave. The amplitude is a measure of the height of the wave. Two sounds of the same pitch can have different amplitudes. For example, this wave has a small amplitude and would be a soft sound, while this wave has a large amplitude and would be a loud sound. So now that we know sound waves come in different forms, how does the cochlea distinguish between different types of sound waves? Let's first focus on how the cochlea identifies pitch. Several theories have been proposed for pitch perception. Here, we'll focus in on the two main theories of pitch perception, the temporal theory and the place theory. First, the temporal theory states that hair cells bend at a rate proportionate to the sound wave frequency. And thus, auditory neurons will fire action potentials phase locked with the frequency of the sound wave. However, there is a physiological limit to how quickly action potentials can be generated due to the absolute refractory period. This limit is approximately a thousand hertz. This presents a problem as humans can hear from 20 to 20,000 hertz. Thus, phase locking only enables for a small range of frequencies that humans can hear. So, what mechanisms enable the sensing of wavelengths with frequencies greater than 1,000 hertz? This is where the second theory comes in, place theory. Sound waves entering the cochlea will reach a peak in basilar membrane movement at different distances from the oval window. This distance is dependent on the frequency of the sound wave. This is because the properties of the basilar membrane vary along its length. Closer to the oval window, the basilar membrane is much more narrow and stiff, while further away from the oval window, near the center of the cochlear spiral, the basilar membrane is wider and more flexible. These different properties of the basilar membrane determine how different locations of the basilar membrane react to different sound wave frequencies. High frequency sound waves peak near the oval window. Low frequency sound waves will peak furthest away from the oval window at the center of the cochlear spiral. And medium frequency sound waves peak closer to the middle of the cochlea. Thus, the cochlea can discriminate between different sound wave frequencies depending on where they induce peak movement in the basilar membrane. Now that we've looked at pitch, what about amplitude? Sound wave amplitude is coded by the extent of movement of the basilar membrane. The larger the amplitude of the sound wave, the larger the displacement of the basilar membrane, and therefore, the more the hair cell cilia will bend. With greater bending of the cilia, more mechanosensitive receptors will be activated, 
thus initiating larger electrical signals, more neurotransmitter release, and more action potentials in the auditory nerve traveling towards the brain. Not only is the cochlea able to sense sound waves, but it is able to distinguish between specific properties of sound, such as pitch and amplitude. This information then travels along the auditory nerve to the brain where it can be further processed and perceived. 